invited but won't come? Let me ask you something. Who in a right mind will pass up everlasting life? In this life, we know that we're going to die. Ever since creation been taking place, or ever since creation has taken place, people have died. But if someone come to you and offer you the ability to live forever and never die, why would you pass that up? See, Jesus came on the earth and gave people an invitation to receive everlasting life. He even sent his apostles to go out into all the world to invite people to receive everlasting life. But the problem is, many people have found themselves even unworthy to even receive everlasting life when it's so simple. The only thing that requires, that God requires for us to do to receive everlasting life is to believe on the one he sent, to love God, and to love your neighbor. Now, how hard can that be? How hard is it to just believe that God sent his only begotten son into the world to be the savior of the world, to die for the world's sins? How hard is it to just show that you love God? And we show by look, look um, show that we love God simply by just keeping His commandments. And His commandments, honestly, are not burdensome. Like, how hard is it to not do the things that God say don't do? How hard is it to not commit adultery? Do you have to cheat on your spouse? How hard is it to not steal? Do you have to steal from your neighbor? How hard is it to not worship other gods? Why can't you just accept the only true God? How hard is it to honor your father and your mother is that hard the ones that gave you birth how hard is it to not want what belongs to others to covet how hard is why can't you just get your own so the point i'm bringing up is if we show god love and walk in those things he requires us and we show our neighbors love by not doing the things to hurt them or cause them harm like we got X ourselves. How hard is that to do? Now, and I think that the book of John chapter 3, it gives an answer to that. So in John chapter 3, it says um, how in verse, what's that? I'm going to start at 16. It says, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish. So God loved us all so much that he gave his only begotten son that we just believe in him, we should not perish. And then he says, but have everlasting life. Believing in his son will give us everlasting life? That's all I got to do is believe in his son? Then he goes on to say, for God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. So when God sent his son, he didn't come to condemn us. He came to save us. And then in verse 18, it says, he that believeth on him is not condemned, but he that believeth not is condemned already because he had not believed in the name of the only begotten son of God. So it's just that simple. Just believe in the name of the only begotten son of God. But it's something else I want to say. Verse 19 says, and this is the condemnation that light is coming to the world and men love darkness rather than the light because their deeds were evil. And see, and that's the problem right there. Men love darkness so much that they won't even come to the light. Men deeds are so evil that they don't even want to come to the light. It's simple to receive everlasting life. But people will refuse or they show that they refuse everlasting life. Why? Because they, they love their own deeds. They love to do those things that are contrary to God by pleasing themselves. The lust of their eyes, the lust of the flesh, and the pride of life. It's when God has made salvation so simple. Now, let's look at the book of Luke chapter 14. I want to read you uh, a parable here or, or, or a story that Jesus gave in the book of um, Luke 14, starting in verse 16. It says... Uh, 
Then said he unto him, A certain man made a great supper and bade many. Meaning he, he made a supper and he invited many. And sent his servant at supper time to say to them that were bidden or that were invited, Come, for all things are now ready. Now, who don't want to come eat? Who don't want to get invited to a supper? If someone asks you, say, um, I, I want to invite you to come out to eat with me, it's free. All you got to do is just come. Who wouldn't go? It's your favorite restaurant. So he says in verse 18, And they all, with one consent, began to make excuse. He says, The first said unto him, I have bought a piece of ground, and I must needs go and see it. I pray thee, have me excused. So one made an excuse, well, you know, hey, I bought some ground, I bought some land. So kind of, you know, excuse me. In verse 19, and another said, I have bought five yoke of oxen, and I go to prove them. I pray thee, have me excused. So he bought some oxen, but he want to take care of them. So he want to be excused. Verse 20. And another said, I have married a wife and therefore I cannot come. So one, hey, he went and got married. He, he want to focus on his wife. And so he want to be excused. Verse 20. And another said, no, verse 21. So that servant came and showed his Lord. Now, this the servant is the one who the Lord sends out to invite people to this supper. So verse 21, so that servant came and showed his Lord these things. Then the master of the house, being angry, said to his servants, go out quickly into the streets and lanes of the city and bring in hither the poor and the maimed and the halt and the blind. And the servant said, Lord, it is done as thou hast commanded, and yet there is no, there is room. And the Lord said unto the servant, Go out into the highways and hedges and compel them to come in that my house may be filled. So the Lord just want people to come into his house. All right. So that, so that he could do something for them. He want to feed them. Verse 24. For I say unto you that none of those men which were bidden or none of those men which were invited shall taste of my supper. Now the Lord have something good. That no man can um, grasp. It, it don't even cross our minds the things that God has planned. But yet he's inviting people to come to this supper. Come to this supper. I'm inviting you. All you got to do is do this. It's very simple. But yet men, they were so caught up in the cares of this life. Let's look at Luke chapter 8 verse 14. Now Luke 8 14 says, And that which fell among thorns are they which, when they have heard, go forth and are choked with cares and riches and pleasures of this life, and bring no fruit to perfection. So he's referring to the ones that who receive the word, but then it falls um, among thorns. And so in those thorns is is what he referring to is the cares and the riches and the pleasures of this life. So they too busy caught up. Remember the, the, the ones that made the excuses? Oh, I married a wife. Oh, I bought oxen. Oh, I, I bought a piece of ground. I bought some land. So they too caught up into the cares of this life, into the riches and the pleasures, to where they don't even go to this uh, this supper that they've been invited to. When, when the Lord of the house... He want to give them something that's good. He invited them to his table. Now look at Luke 21, 34. It says, And take heed to yourselves, lest at any time your hearts be overcharged with surfeiting and drunkenness and cares of this life. And so that day come upon you unawares. So this is referring to Jesus' second coming. He wants you to be prepared because you don't want to be caught up into the cares of this life or out there indulging in sin and then the Lord come upon you at a time you're not even expecting him to come. And so what he's doing is he's inviting people to come to this supper. And see, and so in this supper that the Lord is inviting, inviting you to, 
it comes with everlasting life. He wants you to have the ability to live a life on this, or to live life forever and never have to die and never have to go through pain again and never have to go through sorrow ever again. And so he don't ever want you to have to experience the things you are experiencing in this life. Like now we are destined that our flesh is going to die. But Jesus want to invite you to everlasting life. But it all comes from the Father God, the creator of all things. God love us so much that he gave his only begotten son. Why? Because he wants to save us from our sins so that we can receive his invitation to everlasting life. But the thing is, like he says in Acts 13, 46, then Paul and Barnabas waxed bold and said, it is necessary that the word of God should first have been spoken to you. But seeing you put it far from you, put it from you and judge yourselves unworthy of everlasting life. Lo, we turn to the Gentiles. So this word about Jesus and his coming and how God want to save you by him. They put that word from them. This is the invitation to everlasting life because you have to go through God's son in order to get that life. So when they preach this word to the Jews about Jesus and how you got to go through the door of Jesus because no man coming to the father, but by him, they didn't want that. So they put that word away from them. They put it from, they didn't want to hear that message. They didn't want to hear that. All right. But that's the way that God has chosen. That's the key to heaven. Jesus is the key to heaven. The son of God is the key to heaven, but they put it from them. And so what they did is judge themselves unworthy of everlasting life. So they don't even deserve it because they showing that they don't want it. And that's the same thing how it is today. People, they fight against the son of God. People, they are rather indulge in sin. They are rather care about the cares of this life and the pleasures of this life to where they don't receive the invitation to have everlasting life. See, they care about the life on this earth and being rich and and doing and just talking to people and you know developing getting into marriages and and just living life on this earth or um, they focus on their businesses or they focus on owning land and property that you would never really own you will own it temporarily until you check out of here and die and then now you face whatever what eternity but jesus is inviting you to have everlasting life so that when your body dies you still can live for an eternity where you are living in peace in the presence of God and his son Jesus Christ where you enjoying to eat from the tree of life where you never have to uh, die ever again but it's up to you if you decide that you want to receive his invitation he's inviting you so I would say accept his invitation. We all fall short along the way. But the Bible says a righteous man falls the seven times and get up. You get back up. You shake the dust off your feet. Ask God to guide you. And you continue to strive. Don't give up because you fall short. I've fallen short. We all fall short because we in sinful flesh that walks against the spirit. But continue to uh, walk in, the, in, you know, in, in this life continuously striving to please the Lord and don't worry about people and what they got to say about you focus on your your um journey to the everlasting life in the in the kingdom of God focus on that so repent get baptized in the name of Jesus Christ strive to turn away from all sins and live your life in total submission to him and resist the devil and so I pray that God will strengthen you um, on this journey, I pray that he will strengthen me on this journey and we will all accept the invitation that God has given us all. All right. See y'all in the next video.